Hello everybody, Disciple here with Overwatch Curios. So, in Overwatch, you've got your pretty typical heroes like Tracer or Soldier 76, and your villains like Reaper and Widowmaker. But the Junkers are a pretty unique pair. They aren't clean and proper, living in a world of high-tech devices and comfortable living, or in the structured life of a soldier. Instead, they came barreling out of the irradiated Australian outback with makeshift weapons blazing, motorcycle engines pounding, and set a course for the largest crime wave the world has ever seen. So far, they're the only set of playable heroes that came as a pair into the story of Overwatch, and they share a lust for carnage with a few major differences here and there. The design of Junkrat and Roadhog went through some major changes, but it's always been a vision of post-apocalyptic, Mad Max sort of scavengers meets insane criminal minds sort of style. Today, we're going to focus on what Roadhog could have been, and speculate on how the game might have been different if he took a different design direction, as we take a closer look into his older designs, concepts, and art, and compare them to what we know today. Anyway, here we go. At Blizzard HQ, there's a really cool museum room that showcases all kinds of cool art, items, and ideas that the various teams came up with when designing their games. The one we're going to take a look at today shows Junkrat and Roadhog with some awesome concept art and notes on their design. From the image, we get a lot of information about how Roadhog began and what concepts shaped up his lore and kit in the game before he was adjusted to what we play on live servers. If you take a look at the notes, you'll notice the second bit with Roadhog stating that at one point in time, they envisioned him as an irradiated mutant with an actual pig's head stitched onto his own. Of course, the Junkers lore in the game describes the Outback as being irradiated and uninhabitable because of the destruction of Australia's Omnium, which is one of the automated factories that produced the Omnic in the first place. It exploded and left the Outback a wasteland, so it wouldn't be too far of a stretch to envision Roadhog as a mutant pigman. Roadhog would have probably had a very different lore, kit, and feel in the game if this art direction actually kept going. There might have been less of a focus on the hook and scrap gun theme, leaning more towards radiation guns and toxic waste perhaps. You could even imagine him taking a more direct stitches approach to disgusting bile or excrement type abilities, stitches being the abomination from World of Warcraft and the hero in Heroes of the Storm. His clothing and armor probably wouldn't be a lot different as he'd still be grabbing random pieces of metal, scraps, and other things lying around to craft some makeshift clothing but there'd most likely be less of a biker kind of theme to him, maybe replaced with some sort of makeshift hazmat stuff or other protective gear, or just going all out for the mutant theme with other things stitched onto him or just hanging open. The iconic hook definitely would have stayed, being used to bring enemies in close for nasty biohazard attacks and stuns, and they could have even adapted the scrap gun mechanic into a weapon that fired irradiated metal causing damage over time or some sort of negative status effect. The mutant psycho style of art concept really would have made Roadhog an extremely different experience than he is now, and he might not even been a tank, but I can see how they might have gotten away from this since it isn't necessarily super appealing to play since you never really feel like you can relate to a character that's quite that much of a mutant. Even someone like Zenyatta who is of course a robot still has a lot of relatable characteristics, but someone who has the head of a pig and is just a complete irradiated meltdown, well. Maybe if your mother wanted to play Overwatch. Anyway, another note to take a look at involves his primary weapon. The hammer shotgun, as it shows, was the predecessor to the scrap gun, and it was conceptualized in a holster on Roadhog's back. You can tell the weapon is very large considering the scale of it compared to Roadhog's huge frame. If you look closely, you can even see that the holster for the shotgun resembles a pig's head as well. The hammer shotgun looks a lot like a double-barreled breakaway design that probably would have only shot twice before reloading, but would have packed a seriously strong punch. This makes us think about the reload speed though, because Overwatch is a very fast-paced game and you could wonder how a single or double-shot weapon might feel in a sea of automatic rifles, extended mag SMGs, and rapid-fire pistols. Although, if a skilled Roadhog player could severely damage or even one-shot a 200-ish health pool hero, then it might have made for a great hook and one shot mechanic, much like we already see in the scrap gun. However, with the existing scrap gun, a lot of the time you do need to shoot them beforehand, or at least get in a melee after. 
Now the hammer shotgun was a good first concept, but it probably wouldn't have fit quite as well as the scrap gun that we have today, and it was probably the idea that led to the team brainstorming about the scrap gun we have now. Though, if the hammer shotgun and the mutant theme had panned out, we may have seen the shotgun or whatever was conceptualized afterward fire those irradiated slag pieces we talked about, or maybe even a gun that fired toxic mess out instead of a solid projectile. Roadhog's abilities are where we can really go nuts with the cool ideas, because these two early themes of his lead to some really crazy ideas. First off, the team had some awesome concepts for Roadhog before his final kit was set. You see the list there, and the hook grab is pretty much what we have on him now. But the absorb damage notation there is very interesting. Roadhog is a tank, and he does like to soak a bunch of damage and mitigate that with his take a breather ability. But the notes here call for an ability that actually absorbs a certain amount of damage. As of yet, we don't have a direct absorb tank hero in the game. Every tank either has some sort of barrier or shield to absorb that damage, or an ability to mitigate it like Difa's defense matrix. Roadhog may have once been envisioned as a damage sponge, being able to take a certain amount of damage at no cost to his health or that of his allies, and mitigate it in some way. It may have gone to feed some other ability or stat, sort of like when a player shoots a Zarya shield, or it might have just bounced off or been absorbed harmlessly until the damage value was met. The absorption may have taken the damage and converted it straight into healing as well, causing incoming fire to buff up his health somehow and allow him to keep on fighting. This would obviously be incredibly strong, but if it were limited to a very short amount of time or to an amount of health, it could be balanced in Overwatch as a whole. Someone like Zarya can absorb an infinite amount of damage as long as it all happens at once. She can stand right up next to a D.Va ultimate and absorb the entire thing, even though her shield doesn't go to nearly that amount, and of course it does give her damage in return. So thinking that someone can mitigate all damage for one second, or up to 200 or 300 damage, and turn that into a capped amount of health isn't that crazy. Or it could be a longer duration ability and be an ultimate, something like Abaddon's ultimate from Dota 2, Borrowed Time, where he turns all damage into healing for a period of time. In that game it even activates if he drops to a certain amount of health, but I like in Overwatch that he might have to actually press it so that there is a bit of risk, since obviously you want to go as low as possible before using it, so you can heal as much as possible as well. It also could have meant that Roadhog himself would somehow hunker down or cover himself to absorb the incoming damage, maybe even doing something crazy like using his robust midsection to bounce off the incoming damage like a piece of rubber. It could be pretty ridiculous, but after all this is Roadhog, and he has been a pretty ridiculous character overall along with his partner Junkrat. Now if we combine this idea with that of the mutant theme, he might have even had some sort of mutant ability to actually physically absorb the projectiles like bullets and more, and maybe even fire them back at enemies or use them in his own weapons. The notes also have a line that reads, no cooldown. We can speculate on a few ways this could be taken since there isn't really a description other than that. But one theory is that Roadhog had an ultimate ability that would make all of his other abilities have no cooldowns for a set amount of time. He'd pop his ultimate and use his hook, heal, or whatever crazy damage abilities he had over and over until the effect wore off. This would actually be really interesting to see since instead of an ultimate that did something very direct like every hero in the game pretty much currently has, this could give the Roadhog player a choice of what to use in a given situation. For example, if you need to absorb a lot of damage and hold the point while your team respawns and comes back to help you out, you could spam your self heal over and over or your damage mitigation. If you need to disrupt an enemy team who's coordinating ults or abilities, you could just throw out as many hooks as possible and even have a couple chances to grab someone that's dodging you. Or if you were going to make a push, you could spam your heaviest hitting abilities and try to push the enemy team back for a few seconds. This could even be expanded to a team-wide approach. If the ultimate might be able to give your team no cooldowns for a short duration and be able to use a couple of their abilities multiple times, that could be absolutely insane and make it a really, really cool theory. Another idea we had about this no cooldown ability is that it's a, an attack or defense ability that doesn't have a cooldown, but it does have some sort of charge, like Bastion's self heal or Diva's defense matrix. Maybe he could toggle his damage reduction on and off until it ran out, or maybe he could have some other ability to use his hook with, like an area zone attack where he spun his hook around himself, and it would all work off of that charge system. 
Anyway, here's a little bit of Roadhog art trivia for you as well. Roadhog currently has a tattoo of a motorcycle engine, pig's head, and a banner on its abdomen. However, in the first original concept art piece that shows a ton of heroes all lined up, you can clearly see the tattoo was originally conceptualized as an eagle with a banner and that same pig's head. Of course, we don't have any confirmation on why the eagle was there and then replaced with the motorcycle engine. It could just be a really cool piece of art. However, the wedge-tailed eagle is actually kind of a big deal in Australian Animal Guide symbolism and is the most common large eagle in the world. Whether or not this was actually the reason for the eagle idea, or if it had something to do with his character at all, or if the artist just wanted a biker tattoo, we're not exactly sure. But the replacement of the eagle with a motorcycle engine perfectly makes sense as the Junkers' main method of mobility are the choppers they ride on, and it's a huge part of their theme and lore design. Roadhog is a really super fun hero to play in his current form and can be extremely useful in a ton of situations when in experienced hands. However, the wide range of abilities that he could have had along with his different weapons and possibly having some sort of no cooldown ability could have made him a completely different hero to play overall if any of those had panned out. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video about what he could have been. We really enjoy making these types of videos and exploring, you know, what these characters were at each point in the development cycles before we got the polished character we had today, because game design is just so incredibly interesting to us. I hope that you guys find it interesting too, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.